Tesco's, Nando's, Iceland, McDonald's, Greg's, Sainsbury's, Costa, Subway, what do they all have in common? They're predicting that food shortages resulting from Brexit-related supply chain disruption will be here till well after Christmas. Let's dig a little deeper. But first, if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of new ones every Wednesday and Saturday. Richard Walker, a self-confessed Brexit voter and managing director of the downmarket frozen food retailer Iceland, is now explicitly saying that the supply chain crisis is linked to Brexit and is a self-inflicted wound that could be solved by the government allowing work visas and the resulting freedom of movement to HGV drivers. Hashtag Remainer now. The chairman of Tesco's echoed this call and said the shortfall in lorry drivers in the UK had now reached 100,000, meaning that stocks will be depleted from now and through Christmas. Steve Murrells, chief exec of the co-op supermarket chain, says that current food shortages are the worst he's ever known, referencing post-Brexit migration rules. And it's not just the lorry drivers that have gone AWOL. Almost 90,000 Romanian and Bulgarian workers have left the UK since the end of 2019, and they were overwhelmingly employed in lower paid logistics and food production roles. There's also 14,000 vacancies in meat processing, and many tens of thousands of workers that are required for seasonal employment in agriculture just don't exist in the UK, which is why the fruit and veg is currently rotting in our fields. In addition, there's a huge demand for more labour in the hospitality industry to allow restaurants to stay open, or in the case of Nando's and many others, to reopen premises that are currently closed due to staff shortages. Supply and demand in the labour market means there must be an upside to this in the form of increased wages for some of the lowest paid workers in our economy. And that's great. Hopefully, long term, there will be a redistribution of wealth in the post-pandemic world, with low paid jobs being better rewarded. But short term, these pay rises so far are nothing huge. And even if they were, it wouldn't have the desired effect for employers because the staff no longer exist in the UK labour market. Apparently, chefs have done the best of all, with a 15% pay rise across the board so far this year. But there are only so many chefs in the UK, so if any are attracted to a job because it's paying better, then in 99% of cases, that chef will be filling a vacancy and creating one at the same time. The problem is a lack of workers. And whether it's a chef or a warehouse operative or a driver, it won't be solved by escalating wages. Yet still, some sections of the media, like the BBC, are pretending that this is more about the pandemic than Brexit. To me, this is bonkers. The elephant in the room. I mean, come on. We all know that ending the rights of EU citizens to live and work in the UK was something the Leave campaign were advertising as one of the main benefits of Brexit. And the consequences were entirely predictable and pointed out by people opposing Brexit at every opportunity. Now, Brexiters are acting like Brexit isn't doing exactly what it said on the tin and trying instead to blame the pandemic or the hugely exaggerated pingdemic. The mindset of a Brexiter was that foreigners were taking our jobs and that these British-born workers were finding it difficult to find employment and when they did, all these bleeding Polish immigrants were depressing their wages. As I have had shouted at me several times since 2016, having married into a Polish immigrant family. That never happened before the referendum, funnily enough. So the Brexit mindset is that the shortfall in the labour market would be filled with eager British locals. We know that the only reason those EU workers were brought here in the first place is to fill jobs that local British hires refused to do. The job those EU workers did be it picking fruit and veg for long hours under the sun, or getting covered in blood, guts and shit in an abattoir, that doesn't appeal to most British workers. They weren't there queuing up just waiting to be given the opportunity because they either A, didn't want the jobs, or B, there were other jobs done by EU migrants, for example, HGV driving, that actually require training and licensing, which takes time and a certain skill set. The CBI and several employers associations are calling on the government to relax post-Brexit visa rules to switch on the taps again to allow European labour back into the UK. Whether these workers would return to the hostile environment of Plague Island is not at all certain. The Boris Johnson hard Brexit has happened, 
and there's probably no turning back the clock, at least for as long as the current Westminster cabal remain in power, fighting their culture wars and espousing anti-EU sentiment at every turn. It is Boris Johnson's hard Brexit that is sabotaging Britain's recovery from the pandemic. The same Boris Johnson who, while campaigning for vote leave on board his ridiculous bus, said it would be unthinkable that any Prime Minister would ever allow the UK to leave the single market, or the customs union, or allow a border down the Irish Sea. Now, in 2021, a Home Office spokesperson this week is claiming that the British people repeatedly voted to end free movement and take back control of our immigration system. <coughs> Did we really? With this insular and inward-looking stance, their claims of a global Britain would be laughable if they weren't so tragic. This xenophobia is shaping their decisions at every step, with Johnson's government refusing to give way on issuing work visas for the European workers desperately needed to solve the supply chain crisis, saying that British employers just need to do more to recruit and retrain British workers. So I trust that all Truth to Power viewers are looking forward to Christmas 2021.